Hello, we're in Malta and we're going to talk about the, the sides of picture frames. Sounds ridiculous, isn't it? The sides of picture frames. So I've done two videos before this one, about one about shellac, one about gilding picture frames. And the idea really is, if you're buying a picture, to help you value it, date it, find the origin, work out whether it's a good picture or not. If you, if you use the, the frame as a, as a source of information, that is often helpful. But of course, many frames are new frames on old pictures. The frames taken from other pictures and cut down. Uh, they can be reproduction frames. They can be swapped frames. So you can't guarantee the frame belongs to the picture. But uh, if you're buying a picture, buying pictures, if you use your six senses, the frame is one of one of the things you need to look at. And if you, if it's not got the original frame, then you have to ask yourself why has it not got the original frame. So I'm going to go through some pictures which have got the original frames. And what I want to show you are the sides. When the gilders made the picture frames, they would save money and save time by not gilding the sides of the frame. They would gild the front of the, the, front of the frame and they would use a gold coloured paint, an ochre paint, a water-based, ordinary matte paint to paint the sides. And in Malta, 50% of the paintings originally had ochre on the sides. In England, it's the same, 50%. When a picture now goes for restoration, the owners don't want the picture to come back with ochre on the sides. They'll get the restorer to gild to go the whole thing. And of course, there are pictures where the frame should be gilded on the sides. So it's not a case of all paintings originally had ochre sides. I would say most early paintings and early painting frames, early picture frames, had ochre sides. So the idea of the ochre, when it was new, it would be pale and matte, not shiny, and it wouldn't detract from the gold. It would look like gold from a distance. So if you're going into an auction house now, or a stately home in England or in Malta, and you look at all the pictures, you won't see this, this ochre, you just won't see it. No, no one sees it, but, it's, it, but in half of the pictures, they have ochre on the sides, not gold. So it saves money, it saves time. On a picture like this, which is from the 1600s, if a gilder now is be gilding it, they're going to spend two or three hundred pounds on the gold alone. If they're a bad gilder, they'll waste the gold, the overlaps will be excessive, there will be holes, they won't, they, won't, they won't fill properly, there'll be tears, there'll be creases and have to go back over the top. And the act of gilding this frame will be the same time as preparing the gesso when it comes to restoration. Because you have to have the gesso, very, very smooth, you have to put the bowl on, the glue. The glue is impregnated into clay, painted on when it's hot. And then when the, when the gilding is done, the water gilding, they, they wet the bowl and put the gold on. So it's a very, very, very archaic um, form of decoration. It's ever so expensive. So I like to see picture frames where there is still the ochre. And usually it's an indication that it hasn't gone through a restorer's or through a workshop. Uh, and it's a sign of, usually a sign of age. You don't find these ochre sides on paintings any later than 1818 or 1890. I, I, that's my feeling. So sometimes they make the frame and they sand the wood down and they put the ochre paint straight onto the wood. And this is an example of a very attractive Italian Neapolitan plate, which has a hand, hand, hand painted scene and they've made a beautiful water gilded frame and they have gilded the front but not the sides and they have left the wood and then painted it with the ochre and the, wood, the ochre here is rubbed off and it's greasy and there's dirt on it so you can't see it and you'll find with a lot of the frames with ochre the ochre's perished so here for example you've got crack, cracks and dings and where it's greasy it's gone black and here for example it's rubbed off and you can see the gesso so you have just a recap on the sides 
on some paintings they have ochre on the ones with ochre some of them have gesso underneath the ochre some of them are just are, are pa painted ochre on the on the sanded wood and i have seen ochre paint on the quite coarsely sanded wood so these three here the pair and the single one are examples of ochre paint on a gesso platform which has been put onto the put onto the, the wood so that, that's what's going on here. Sometimes you'll see Florentine mirrors or, or, or carved frames and they use a yellow bowl. This is a red bowl. Uh, if, you, if you were to rub it, you'd, you'd find red coming through. In these Florentine frames, if you, if you rub them, you get the yellow coming through. And you'll find that with a Florentine frame and the Florentine mirror, usually, they will paint the whole thing. And I suspect if, they, if they're painting the area to be gilded in a bowl. They're not, what they're not going to do is just use that paint on the front and then get a different ordinary paint on the back. I think they paint the whole thing. And because this paint has glue in it, it glues together the components, wooden components of a Florentine frame, which is usually made in kit, in kit form. And the, the glue is very, very hard. It's applied when it's warm, it hardens. And in those Italian Florentine frames, you'll see this yellow over the whole thing, all the way around the back, the whole thing is 100% covered in this, in this paint. So I hope that's been interesting. Keep an eye out for ochre sides. Not many people know about it. I had a, I went to see a picture in someone's house this week and uh, this collector had a pair of pictures and he had had them restored and he'd very unusually decided to leave the ochre. But on, the, on this occasion, because you can't see the ochre and people don't look for it, he decided to make it noticeable so he walked into the hallway and there were these two big pictures and the painted section was done in a, in a reddish ochre so you could see them and it really it really is unusual now to see that um, and the effect it gave was it, gave, it seemed to me it, it gave them an increased antiquity and distinctiveness and um, the idea of the, of the ochre was to make it look like the gold so you don't see the ochre but I think that for, for me if I was having one restored I, I, think I also would ask to have it made obvious to the eye as a talking point. Thanks for looking.